is going to the polls. Mm -hmm. So Uganda, a landlocked country that largely relies on the Kenyan port for both import and export, that poses a question on how prepared we are. Indeed, and when you talk about preparation, of course we're looking at the opportunities that this presents, but then also in case challenges emerge, how can we cushion this economy from you know, any of the realities that might emerge? Now, again, it is Man and Markets, and we are committed to sharing with you tips on how we can prepare better. I'm Charles Bode, your host. And I'm Shamim K. Matovo. Welcome. Now, there's a raging debate about the cost of money in this country. And of course, that really gained currency after the central bank raised its CBR rate. And Shamim, of course, the business community is a bit jittery. They're saying you can't increase interest rates at this point in time. Of course, at uh, such a time where businesses are really struggling, we're also trying to understand how can we balance the two where we can control inflation but also continue to hold together the bond between the business community and the banking sector. And central bank rate uh, is one of the tools available not just to the Bank of Uganda but all other central banks in the various economies to manage monetary policy and to combat uh, negative effects of uh, an economy that is heating up or is faced with challenges of a depreciating currency, is faced with the challenges of high and rising interest rates uh, and what basically we call overheating. Uh, my thoughts, central bank was justified and is justified in increasing the, uh, the CBR because it protects the economy from uh, uh, accelerated effects, for example, of currency depreciation. If uh, uh, the economy was let to run free, we could get into a situation of hyperinflation. But by tightening uh, a monetary policy through increasing the central bank rate, uh, uh, it kind of slows down. If there was a depreciation of the currency, or the currency was weakening very fast, tightening the monetary policy and increasing the CBR reduces that. Uh, it's a double-edged sword, obviously, because uh, in, in, in increasing the CBR, the ripple effects uh, or the resultant effects are that interest rates in the economy would also increase, uh, and that uh, would hurt uh, uh, borrowers, for example, uh, because then they would have to borrow more expensively and a lot of the businesses and generally the economy is still in recovery from the uh, lockdown or the effects of the lockdown. To a certain extent, uh, and, 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 and it's, it, it's, it's never one-sided, to a certain extent it would help control inflation, but remember that Uganda's inflation is cost-driven. Uh, and, and, and by that I mean that the inflation is being caused by increases in prices of say fuel, increases in prices of uh, our basic commodities on the back of uh, 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 global political events like the Ukraine-Russia war that's affecting wheat, which is the main component of, of, of food, and also, for example, uh, local increases in, in prices of grain uh, because of prolonged drought across the country. So yes and no. Yes, it will increase to the extent that it controls the depreciation of the currency, which will further feed into anything that we import and cause those prices to go further high. But no, because uh, uh, there are some elements of inflation that are not caused by the things the central bank is trying to cause, uh, uh, to, uh, to control. Uh, I'll give you an example, just like I mentioned, drought. The drought naturally will cause harvest to be bad and the cost of food to go up. That cannot be controlled by rising or increasing the CPR. Uh, the cost of fuel, uh, there's an element of the exchange rate which can be controlled through CBR, but there's also an element of the global oil price driven by maybe conflict in, in, in Ukraine and Russia and other global or logistical supply uh, challenges across the world. So it's 50-50 uh, if I could put it that way. It will partially help, not fully. And, and if you see from Bank of Uganda's last monetary policy statement, they basically say that the risks still uh, uh, remain 
towards uh, of rising inflation on the back of those global challenges. Global increase in prices, uh, depreciation of the currency, not just in Uganda, but across the, 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 the globe, and also supply chain disruptions. Because of COVID and the lockdowns in various economies, logistics became more expensive. The cost of shipping last year and the cost of shipping, or the cost of shipping pre-COVID and in the last one, two years, was almost doubled, uh, depending on the, the route uh, that is being, and, and some, some of those things cannot be sorted out or resolved by uh, moving uh, the CBR rate. To a certain extent, this move will help businesses if it results in a control of the currency, whereby the currency does not depreciate as fast as expected, because then a business that was spending a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars for a ton of produce would still spend the same in shillings if the currency doesn't change. But to the extent that the CBR results in an increase in interest rates, then the businesses will get hurt. Why? Because any business that is borrowing will have to borrow more, so the cost will be more expensive for the business. So to the extent that the business has exposure to the dollar, it will be helped. So I assume the business didn't have to borrow at all. Then it doesn't suffer the negative impact of the rising interest rate. But if it was importing and it was exposed to the currency, depreciating further, moving from 36 to 37, 37 to 38. When you tighten the CBR or increase the CBR and tighten the monetary policy and stop the currency from going further, you're protecting that business from further costs. So it depends on the kind of business. Bank of Uganda predicts inflation to average 7.4% uh, for this financial year. Uh, the latest reading in June was 6.8% uh, for headline inflation, but the upside risks. Upside risks means that it's expected to rise. And I've already spoken about the factors that would cause that to rise. Increase in food prices, increase in fuel, increase in, 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 in prices of things that are imported and that feed into the inflation basket. Uh, currently, projections for, or absurd projections for, uh, for the end of the financial year, uh, sorry, end of the calendar year 2022, are in the range of about uh, 38, 45. Uh, and, and that is a revised estimate up from previously uh, 36, 20, which was the estimate in the first quarter of, of the year. And that obviously is driven by the global events and what has caused the currency to depreciate and, and change. Uh, but when you look at Uganda, you don't want to look at Uganda in isolation. If you look at the various currencies and what's happening, the dollar has strengthened across the world. So, for example, against the euro, the dollar has strengthened or depreciate, uh, appreciated about 11%. Against the pound, the dollar has appreciated about 11.6%. Against the Japanese yen, the dollar has appreciated about 16.4% since January. For Uganda, it has appreciated only 7.2%, which is a fraction of what has happened. So if we started the year at 36.50 and the dollar had appreciated to date 11%, we would right now be seeing the dollar at 4,000, 4,050. But the dollar actually right now is at 38, 38, 20, 38, 30, they are about, it keeps fluctuating day and day. So, whilst it has depreciated, and we're feeling the impact of that, it is much worse in the other, much bigger economies. If you look at East Africa, for example, uh, against the Kenya shilling, this year it has depreciated about 4.5%. For Tanzania, it has been pretty stable, I think, below 2%. But if you take two years in a row, Kenya has depreciated 8%. In 2021, uh, sorry, 2021 and 2022 up to now to depreciate about 8%. Whilst for Uganda, last year, the Uganda shilling did better against the dollar. So if you combine last year and this year, the total depreciation will actually be only about 5%. Because last year, the Uganda shilling was stronger. Yes, so that gives an outlook of how Uganda or how the dollar has reacted in Uganda. So inflation is expected to be uh, slightly higher than where it is. Uh, 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 economic growth is going to be slightly lower uh, because it was previously, I think, forecast to be in the 4%, 4.5% range. Uh, uh, World Bank, I think, had uh, uh, estimated 35 uh, But given the current challenges, increasing inflation, increasing interest rates, 
uh, depreciation of the currency and a general slowdown of the economy and consumption, it means that there's a possibility that we could see low figures this year. I can't say exactly where, but it may be much lower than what is being projected right now.